this presentation is very short. This one only goes over some the, the biggest points without going too much into the kind of the finer details. Very important, the devil is in the details, but still not much time to cover. It's the topic that we typically go over a good couple of hours at our American Laser Study Club courses. Hello and welcome to this short review of laser tissue interaction relevant for the soft tissue surgical lasers. We want to look at the soft tissue lasers from the perspective of their functionality. A very helpful analogy for us is the way we compare vehicles of different functionality. Take a look at the four quadrants in this sketch. This is exactly the idea of how we want to look at the medical lasers out there as to what they can do functionally. So, what defines a good soft tissue surgical laser? The answer has two parts to it. First, the laser beam has to be able to cut or vaporize or ablate the tissue. Second, the laser beam has to provide coagulation and a hemostasis on the surgical margins. Pretty simple. So since we now know uh, that the kind of the laser that we want for the soft tissue surgeries has to cut and coagulate at the same time, uh, we just recognized that there are lasers out there that do not cut and do not coagulate. Here's a simple map of all lasers uh, from the perspective of their ability to ablate and coagulate. Uh, top right corner, ablation and coagulation, perfect for the vascular soft tissue surgery. Another ablative laser but with limited ability to coagulate, perfect for these kind of applications. No ablation, but with the good coagulative properties, perfect for these kind of applications. And photobiomodulation is great, uh, used for the laser that does not inflict much of the thermal uh, effects. So non-ablative lasers on the right, I mean ablative lasers on the right, non-ablative lasers on the left. And here's a question, which lasers specifically belong on the map and where exactly on the map do they belong? To answer, we need to look at the physics uh, of the laser tissue interaction, specifically the optical properties, and more specifically the absorption spectra for the soft tissue main chromophores. Uh, here is the absorption spectrum for the water at a histologically relevant concentration of 75%. This is the hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, at histologically relevant presence of blood in the soft tissue at 10%. Now let's place uh, the, all of the diet and the neodymium yak lasers on this chart. This is where they belong. Around 1000 nanometers. Note the very low values of absorption coefficient, which means long distances that the, these wavelengths can penetrate through the soft tissue. Uh, all the CO2 lasers belong to the neighborhood of the 10,000 nanometers. Very strong absorption, approximately 1,000 times stronger than for the diode and the neodymium YAG laser wavelengths, which means that the, uh, this explains the, why the diodes and the neodymium YAG lasers are referred to as a non-ablative. The CO2 lasers are ablative. Another class of ablative lasers is the erbium uh, laser around 3000 nanometers with about 10 times stronger absorption. Uh, so we have the two uh, ablative laser wavelengths classes and one non-ablative. Erbium laser is characterized by the very shallow coagulation just because of the very shallow depth of penetration of those wavelengths into the soft tissue due to very strong absorption. Uh, the diodes and the neodymium yaks, they're characterized by very deep coagulation just because of the very weak absorption. These, these wavelengths can go into the soft tissue for the long distances. The CO2 laser is in between the, those two classes as far as the depth of the coagulation. And in fact, it's an optimal wavelength for coagulating sub-50 vessel uh, diameters. So summary is for the 1000, 3000, 10,000 nanometer class uh, wavelengths, 1000 nanometer non-ablative with perfect deep 
coagulation, 3,000 class, 3,000 nanometer class devices, perfect ablative devices, but with limited uh, depth of the coagulation. The CO2 lasers are not your best cutters, not the best coagulators, but they do this at the same time efficiently and the optimal for the sub 50 micrometer uh, blood vessel uh, diameter uh, coagulation. Right, back to our map of the ablative coagulative laser classes. CO2 laser fits the bill for the vascular soft tissue surgery. Airbeam lasers fit the bill nicely for the heart tissue and diets and the new DNAVX fit the bill for the uh, non-ablative applications. So now let's look at the uh, several videos uh, which are organized, arranged similar to the map of our medical lasers in the previous slide. All four videos are taken from the public domain on YouTube. Uh, these are, this will be the uh, lip diaphragmectomies, ablative on the right, non-ablative on the left. Uh, on the left we have the uh, non-ablative lasers uh, hot, turned into the hot tip cautery devices by turning them into the charred hot glass tips. Top right corner, fast and bloodless CO2 laser phrenectomy. Top left, slow hot tip uh, cautery. Bottom left, painful to watch. Hot tip, uh, bottom right, fast bloodless incision but the blood is simply washed away by the powerful uh, water spray now switching to a different handpiece with a different wavelength now it's a neodymium yag that coagulates a pool of blood not exactly the best way uh, to use uh, the uh, surgical laser the pseudo laser was the fastest and the other three devices took uh, three to four uh, times as long as the CO2 to complete the lip phrenectomy. I thank you for uh, your t for the time uh, you took to watch this short review. For a more deep uh, discussion of the soft tissue surgical lasers, you can find our longer uh, course through the American Laser Study Club online or on the Facebook.